Welcome to our ACCA paper F7, Financial Reporting for International Stream Study. And my name is Dave, I'm the course director here for the APC. So in this particular section, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce to you the paper F7 exam and what sort of things that we need to study uh, in the entire programme. So first of all, for the F7, I mean the name for that is called the FR, which means it's financial reporting. And that means a very, very important element within the financial reporting, of course, is all about the financial statement. So that means, okay, suppose you are the potential investor. Because, for example, imagine that you've got $1 billion within your hand and you would like to invest that $1 billion into other companies to buy their shares. It's simply because you want to enjoy the game. In technical terms, it's called capital gain. So you look at different companies' financial statements that details the performance of each organisation. So, for example, how much money that they've made during the year, how many assets that they've got, and liability, equity, that kind of stuff. And that's the reason why you want to know the performance of each of these companies, particularly for populistic companies, before you invest your money in buying their shares, or you can call it a stock. So if that's the case then, who actually prepares for these financial statements then? Of course, the answer for that is the financial accountant actually prepares for the financial statements, and that's the reason why in this particular paper we are acting as the financial accountants to prepare for the financial statements to be used by the shareholders, or you can call it as the investors. Which means, okay, suppose you've got $1 billion, you want to invest your money into buying the shares, and that's why you are the investor. And that's the reason why in this particular paper, what I first level, what I'm going to do is I'm going to recap a few things from your early study of the basic idea of the financial statement, just to have an overview of that. And then we're going to detail different accounting standards that we need to follow from the financial accountant's point of view in order to prepare for those financial statements correctly, according to the conceptual framework. And of course we are doing the international stream and that means we are following the international financial reporting standard. Or you can call it as the IFRS. Of course we're going to see all of them in a second, don't worry. And after we've looked at those, for example the basic idea of different financial statements of how we're going to prepare for them, the different accounting standards that we need to learn about the guidance, rules, principles and so on. So after we've done all of those bits and pieces, the next question that we need to ask ourselves is, so for example, you are the financial accountant within a company. Okay, you are now the CEO of the company. And you decide to buy another company because you want to expand your market share. And if that's the case, then okay, that you spend, let's say, $1 billion in buying all of those companies, for example, the company A's shares, 100% of them. You've got absolute control over that company. But the question is, how do you reflect the transaction, which means you spend $1 billion in buying those assets, liabilities, and so on? How can you reflect those transactions into a set of paper, which means how can you reflect those transactions into the financial statement? Yes, accounting comes in. Financial accounting, I mean. So for example, you spend $1 billion out, okay, you simply credit the cash. But what about for the debit side? What about for the uh, cancellation adjustments that you need to make? And that's the reason why in this paper F7 exam of our study later on, we'll be also looking at, so for example, how we're going to prepare for the consolidated financial statements. 
and that means if you purchase another company, how can you recall those transactions? So that would be absolutely key. So after we look at those, uh, the next area that we're going to look at is very, very important, eh? is the statement of cash flow and also how we're going to evaluate the company's performance. So a statement of cash flow will be absolutely important. It's simply because if you ask me, okay, Steve, how much profit that you've made during the year? I can simply say, okay, I've made the accounting profit worth $1 billion. That's the accounting profit. And that means we can recognize those profits even though that we haven't received cash from our customer. Okay, so that means the accounting profit, to some extent, is the rubbish profit. Because that's not real. What is real? Well, the real thing will be the cash on hand. Where do you get the cash? That's real. And that's the reason why we will be focusing on how we're going to prepare for the statement of cash flow in very, very simple steps. I'm going to teach you in a second. And also, if the company has given you a set of financial statements, including the balance sheet, we can call it the statement of financial position, P&L, SOC, cash flow, and how can you judge whether or not this company has done a good job or a bad job? So those are sorts of issues that we are going to learn in this entire course. And I can assure you that the F7 paper is very, very interesting. Okay, trust me. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a feel for the F7 exam itself and how it can be tested uh, in the ACCA exam. So, you can go to www.accaglobal.com and um, go to the bottom of the page and select the past exam papers and filter F7 financial reporting and you will see lots of resources listed here. And click on specimen paper, that's the sample paper that the exam has given you. So don't, what do I mean by paper? It's just to be the exam. So if you select the F7 specimen paper, you've got an option. Either you're going to sit the computer-based exam or the paper-based exam. So let's first of all have a go at the paper-based exam. So, you are given 3 hours and 15 minutes in total to do this particular paper. And this paper has been divided into the section A, B and C. Section A, we've got 15 questions. Section B, we also have got 15 questions. And section C, we've got two long questions to tackle. So let's see then. Now, section A. It's just to be the multiple choice questions that you need to do. And 15 questions, each of them is two marks. And that means within section A, so the total marks will be 30 marks. And that means, let's say the question one, which answer you're going to choose? Question two, which answer you're going to choose? A, B, C, or D. It's the MCQ, which means only one answer would be correct, up to question 15. Okay, 30 marks finished. So now let's move on to section boy. So section boy is the short scenario question. So based upon this scenario that the examiner has set multiple questions based upon this scenario. So for example, we are given this scenario. Okay, that's fine. And then question 16, which answer is correct? 17, 18, 19, 20. And then another scenario. 21, 22, and so on. Um, another, uh, I mean, scenario 26 up to question 30. Total marks, again, be 30 marks. And of course, it will be the multiple choice question. Only one answer will be correct. And the final section for the F7 is the section C. For example, we've got question 31. And we are required A, B and C worth of 20 marks. Part A, 
Prepare a schedule of adjustments required to retain earnings. B. Prepare the statement of finance position. C. Prepares the cash flow extract. Based upon the long case, of course I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. Question 32, for example, we've got A. Comment how the new contract and purchase of the company may affect the consolidated account. And that's what we've talked to you before. So for example, if you buy another company, uh, how you are going to record this uh, onto the financial statements. And now the new contract impact, I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. And part boy calculates the ratios and comment on the profitability and gearing of the company as well which means evaluating a company's performance and C explain what further information that you might require to make analysis more meaningful so 20 marks in total I hope that's not too difficult that means we've got three sections in there section A 15 questions section B 15 questions total will be 60 marks with two 20 marks questions to section C and we will be practicing similar questions uh, in a second. That's the paper based exam. Okay. And if you choose the computer based exams on the other hand, you can see the sample from the accaglobal.com. I'm going to show you here. And If you want to sit the specimen paper, uh, exam style conditions, you should answer the questions presented in a three hour period uh, without reviewing the solution material. So three hours long. Click on next. You are given the instructions, you need to read that. Click on next, instructions again. which means we've got section A for the objective test, same as before section B, same as before section C, constructive response questions is uh, what we've seen just now in the section C. Okay, click on next and move on, and we have got uh, 60 marks in total for section A and B, and 40 marks in total with two questions in the section C. Click on next, OK, click on yes, and we're going to move on to section A, and then click on next. So, you're going to draw this, yeah, onto the right hand side, and click on next to do the next question, and select which one oh, is correct, click on next. And um, unlike in the paper based exam, and now you're required to input a particular figure also in the blank area. Click on next and then choose which one is correct or false. You can try that on your own, that's interesting. It's just to be a technology, etc. Okay. So you can click on the navigator as well to see which questions that you've complete and which questions that you haven't. And also on the uh, right hand top, you can flag this question for review as well. You can use the calculator, by click on the calculator, and then scratch parts as well, where you're going to do some workings on there, and of course the scratch part uh, the exam, the examiner as well as the marker will not review the scratch part and making sure you put your actual working into your page rather than using this rubbish. Okay. Oops. Okay, click on next and next and next and next and next and next and, next and so on and so forth and that will not be too difficult. But just to show you, uh, 
Let me just to show you to section C first of all. That's the section section boy style question. Okay, that's the section boy of our question. It's not so difficult, as you can see. Okay, now it's come to section C. Two questions in total. So, in the section C style of the question, when you are preparing for the financial statement, now ACCA has required students to use the Excel spreadsheets. That's not too difficult because you're given the Excel spreadsheet on the right hand side of your page and so on. Okay, another question. We're going to comment on to the uh, blank area on the right hand side of your page, um, like in a Word document. So that's the exam itself. Click on next. We need to view the screen first before we click on next. That's user friendly. And um, Yes, that's the uh, answer that you've got. And of course, the section C would be marked by marker, which means would be marked by human beings. But the objective test question would be directly marked by the computer. Book your F7 exam in one of your recognised uh, computer-based centre, exam centre, and you can um, ask ACCA about that. Um, for any further information. Okay, so that's just to be the introduction to F7. I hope you find this section useful and interesting. I look forward to seeing you in the next section onwards uh, for F7 journey. Bye for now and good luck with your exam. APC, accounting for your future.